Before we start, I want to thank you for tuning in. If you're enjoying this content and would like to stay up to date with new episodes, don't forget to subscribe on YouTube and turn the notifications button on. And if you'd like to support this content, then I would appreciate a review or comment if you're listening to this on a podcast platform. Enjoy. You know, an experience that I had with one uh, student event where I tried to perform stand-up. I was just a, a huge fan of stand-up up, that, up until that point. Uh, and أول أداء كان يعني فاشل ليش؟ I bombed so bad on stage. Why? And the reason was um, well, I wasn't comfortable in my own skin. It was like I was performing jokes that um, were too rehearsed. Uh, they're not really. And I'm I'm trying to cater to the audience a little too much mm-hmm. instead of telling a personal story. Mm-hmm. Welcome to a new season of the One Day Podcast. I'm your host, Omar Al-Majali, and each week I'm here to discuss powerful concepts around business, mindset, or life, and often share the stage with some of the brightest and most interesting minds of the Middle East to help me do so. Happy to have you here. Enjoy this one. Hello, Sahala Jamia be the One Day Podcast. Today we are diving into an artist's mind. Our guest is one of the biggest stand-up comedians in the region, Fahed Lutleri. Fahed is a Saudi stand-up comedian, an actor, a writer, a creative producer, and one of the most notable YouTube personalities in the region. Ever since his public performance back in 2008, Fahed's career kicked off majorly. And short afterwards, has shared the stage with many international and well-known stand-up comedians, such as Gabriel Iglesias, Maz Jobrani, Tony Rock, Eddie Griffin. And Fahed was also one of the founding members of the online entertainment network till Faz 11, which became the first entertainment network in the Middle East to receive three gold play button awards from YouTube. Hello, Sahala Fahed. Uh, it's actually Fahd al Bateri. Bateri. And I submit it. Bateri. Bateri. my guests, how do you spell your name and your last name? I forgot to do that before. <laughs> <laughs> in English, they assume it's going to be a ta, you know? I'm going to say that it's a ta in the language. <laughs> Man, I agree with me. Uh, welcome to this uh, virtual studio, Fahid. Sharafna, uh, and you're in Saudi right now, صح? Uh Yes, for Riyadh. I'm based in Riyadh, actually. Currently uh, working as a full time uh, content development consultant with NBC Studios. Nice. And uh, yeah, uh, this has been uh, an exciting year. And hopefully, uh, uh, some of the stuff we've been working on, we'll see the light of day, inshallah. Definitely. Man, the entertainment space, digital content space in Saudi is hot these days. The other day, I was actually reading an article. Like, no, no, no. I'm back on Middle Beast. <laughs> That's a completely different kind of crazy. Completely different kind of crazy, I'm sure. And I'm back on the other day, I was reading this um, this article that that was talking about how there was there's like this billion dollar initiative or investment called ignite and they're you know they're funneling investments into the entertainment and media space is that true that's actually true there's ignite and there's a bunch of it, i mean this is هي مجموعه جهود على نفس المستوى على مختلف الاصعده يعني في عندك i think it's called uh, i think it's called leap that happened yes. recently yes, yes. That, happened, that was concentrating more on digital uh, uh mm-hmm. platforms and digital services and digital businesses in general or digital service based businesses Hello. um and there's also uh something similar which is ignite for the entertainment sector uh yeah. Cinema uh, Duali, Zimarajan, and Flam Saudi. These these are two different festivals that are happening. One of them targeting more uh, local productions, and the other one is more of an international appeal kind of uh, concept. All of them have a lot of money for the cinema, so it can on the short film format uh, or, or the feature film format. So, this is the whole thing on the whole thing on the whole thing on the whole is the you know, the reason why you the the media and entertainment specifically the entertainment media uh, sector is just booming uh, is. right now to the point where we can't keep up يعني عدد الكتاب الموجودين في السوق ما يغطي الاحتياج ابدا ابدا ولا حتى 1% حلو بس yeah it's, it's I, good. I love that man 
It's better than the other way around, honestly. I mean, even me, they're creating an ecosystem. All of a sudden, you're going to start seeing more supply. Obviously, there's a can't feed demand, there's a can't feed supply. But into all of this investment, Tala is happening like in shock waves and in drastic amounts in a short period of time. I think it is a bit of an adjustment for people to get used to it. That's yeah. amazing. But when you started, you started back when Mac can't feed any of that stuff and you started with stand up comedy. I want to know. How did you land on stand-up comedy from everything okay. else? Was it a passion? Uh, it was the, how did it develop into a, into a career at some point? Um, initially, it was kind of a hobby and a passion. I was in the University of Texas at Austin. Yeah. There had, there, there had been like, um, uh, you know, an experience that I had with one uh, student event where I tried to perform stand-up. I was just a, a huge fan of stand-up up, the, up until that point. Uh, and <laughs> I bombed so bad on stage. Why? And the reason was, um, well, I wasn't comfortable in my own skin. It was like I was performing jokes that... Um, were too rehearsed, uh, they're not really, and I'm, I'm trying to cater to the audience a little too much, mm-hmm. instead of telling a personal story. I get them the open mic nights, I get the Cap City Comedy Club, which is one of the biggest comedy clubs um, in the US, uh, specifically in, in the Texas area. يعني. Um, get them together more and then I got more comfortable, you know, uh, drawing from my own personal experience as a Saudi student, in the US post 9-11 is just like a playground, a huge playground that you from yeah. Um, for that was that was uh, the initial experience that I had with stand-up comedy. But then any uh Sudia uh it's called the CDPNE program, the college degree program for non-employees. رجعت واشتغلت في الشركة لمدة أربع سنين تقريبا أربع سنين خمس أربع إلى خمس سنين تقريبا before I decided to to uh, resign and and pursue uh, comedy and entertainment production in general full time قبلها طبعا uh, there was a slight manifestation of 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 stand up comedy shows all of a sudden out of nowhere out of nothing فجأة في stand up comedy shows that are happening um, the first one being uh, the Axis of Evil comedy tour, uh, sh- uh, you know, performing in Bahrain. Yeah. Um, I saw that on Facebook and I, I felt like, you know, I should just send a message to, I think it was Abbas Qasim. that I sent a message to one of the organizers. It was Salah Janah and Abbas Qasim that organized the show in Bahrain. So I shot them a line and asked them if they were holding any auditions for opening uh, acts because I, I know from my experience on it, every headliner has an opening act. So I said, yeah, sure, we're looking for local talents. And I was in the airport. The airport is a little bit different from the airport. Yeah, yeah, there's a bridge. Exactly, there's just a causeway. And the whole trip is like 40 to 45 minutes. So I was like, okay, how about our audition? They're like, okay. It's interesting. I know we're getting any interest from the Saudi side. I was like, yeah, I've, I did perform before. Uh, in the U.S., so they're like, okay, we're interested. So I went, and it was this very awkward audition process in a cafe. I think it was Costa Cafe or something, <laughs> in in this mall and somewhere in Bedeya, I think. Or it was, it was just, it was, it was really, really an in, it, interesting to say the least. Yeah, <laughs> the, the whole uh, the setup was so unequipped to to hold stand up stand up comedy yeah, dude, I'm pretty sure it was awkward for you also to perform yeah but because we were a bunch of people uh, auditioning we all act as each other's audience so that was a little that mitigated the situation a little bit yeah. nice el mohim fa them to then i was chosen well, one of i think we were four or five opening acts for the guys for bahrain over two nights performed in front of a bunch of people um uh, had the joy of of, of uh, getting to know Maz Jibrani, Ahmed Ahmed, and uh, yeah, Maz. I think uh, we reconnected afterwards, like years later, and this was like maybe eight years later. Mm-hmm. And October two thousand eight is when I performed with them, and then in two thousand sixteen, I actually uh, performed at the Laugh Factory in, in Los Angeles, and yeah, the that's major. Person introducing me was Maz Jibrani, so wow, that was interesting. Wow, how it turned around! But yeah. Um, 
So yeah, I, I, I decided to do stand up for a little bit because of the freedom of the format, freedom of the art form. And I, and into, you're the sole performer, writer, director, everything. And فبسبب حرية ال ال الأداء على المسرح مقارنة بالأداء على المسرح اللي تابع لنص معين أو مكتوب حبيت ال 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 flexibility في البداية طبعًا كنت أقدم عروض بالإنجليزي لأن الأودينس كان يبغى عروض بالإنجليزي بعدين صار في سويتش صار في تغيير أنا وبراهيم خير الله وشباب كثير عمر حسين وغيرهم Uh, اللي كانوا يعني بدينا نطلع في المجال كستاند اب كوميديز من السعوديه سويتش تو ارابيك هنا تغيرت الديناميكيه حقت العروض صارت الجوكس تختلف صارت النكت صياغتها تختلف uh, الورد بلاي يختلف اللعب على الكلمات يختلف الافكار اللي تطرح الاشياء اللي تنتكلم عنها المواضيع صارت لوكلايز اكثر uh, لان عارفين ان الجمهور حيفهمها ما هو يعني It's not a mixture of expats and 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 locals that are are attending the same show. It's صار الموضوع يعني إذا ما كانوا سعوديين كلهم كانوا سعوديين ومقيمين عرب وفاهمين ثقافة السعودية أكثر من المقيمين غير العرب أو غير متحدثين باللغة العربية. فهذا الشيء اللي اللي نقلة نوعية في الستاند اب كوميدي في السعودية. بعدين this uh, kind of like was bolstered by our presence online. With, with some of the stuff that we're doing, whether me with Tilfaz 11, Omar Hussain with U-Turn, or Badr Saleh with U-Turn, and uh, the different shows we were, we were uh, writing and shooting and producing and, and putting out there for people to watch. And we started getting millions of views. I remember the first yeah. episode of the show, the first show was La Ikhthar, and the first episode, we were just excited to get 30,000 views the first week. Um, by the end of uh, our run, I think we were expecting at least a million views per week you know so that was that was uh that was an interesting uh, trip or a uh, journey um the whole the whole yeah. way up until recently بس بعدين توصل مرحلة انه يعني خلاص سقف اليوتيوب حتى اليوتيوب اصلا سياسات اليوتيوب تغيرت صارت تدعم الفلوجز اكثر they want more daily uh, content and you know with um, the production costs that we're uh, accumulating over time and everything it it takes a while to 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 create that kind of curated content. Uh, we, we're, we weren't doing vlogs, we were doing more like short film uh, episode formats, and sort of like, um, yeah. Yeah. The, best, the best example of it is Khambala. Oh. It was closer to the film format and the show TV show format than actual vlogging. Mm. Uh, we did a series of vlogs, but they were more like travel vlogs, which is Mdakarat Tal Faz. And, uh, you know, after a while, um, I uh, felt like I wanted to experience something new. If I parted ways with the guys uh, amicably, obviously, and then very, very positively uh, in um, 2016. Uh, mm-hmm. about uh, characters. Uh, that was an interesting experience. Uh, that was an interesting experience. Before that, my only other experience outside of YouTube was in the film from ATB with uh, Ali Mustafa. Yeah, yeah. So I was overwhelming. Then I went from YouTube, stand-up comedy in YouTube, boom, على طول film. Feature film, at short film. Yeah, I'm going to talk about that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Ali Mustafa was a very interesting uh, person to meet, and I learned so much from him during that project. I know what I learned from stand-up comedy is the basis of, uh, upon which my current work is, ba- is built, which is... Um, Writing. كتابة أساس يمكن أقوى أساس في الستاند اب كوميدي بشكل عام. كثير ناس يحسبون أن الموضوع ارتجال وفي ناس كثير يترجمونها بالعربي بشكل خاطئ كوميديا ارتجالية. هي ما هي كوميديا ارتجالية، بعض المواقف قد تكون مرتجلة بالذات اللي فيها تفاعل مع الجمهور. But in general it's all rehearsed. It's all rehearsed. It's all written. There's room, leeway for uh, you know, uh, impromptu uh, performances yeah. uh, reacting to certain you know hecklers for example but in general no it's it's very well formulated written rehearsed يعني متعوب عليها مو يطلع واحد الميكروفون يستظرف وخلاص تهل الموضوع انا ضحك it's it's like it's a process it's a process. There's a process to it yeah 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 i'm sure yeah. يعني خليك من السيمي بانيك اتاك اللي تجيك قبل ما تطلع المسرح اصلا الزعامه هذه راح احكي لك اه اي بيرفورمينغ ان فرونت اوف ا كراود اند اودينس ذس از ذا نمبر 1 ستاتستيكلي ذا نمبر 1 فير ان ذا وورلد يعني 
تخيل this is your job <laughs> to go <laughs> هو بدي يعني I honestly was gonna ask you about that like stand up comedy is not easy at all man like it requires a lot of vulnerability you're going out there trying to make people laugh there's significant chances you're gonna be rejected ومو سهل بالمرة بدنا جرأة يعني what if الناس زي ما بنحكي بالاردني بنكسوك ما بضحكوا how do you deal with the the fear of rejection aspect of it or the rejection speaking of which I, I actually performed at chaplains I remember once Uh, in Phil Urdu, oh, the Jordanian audience is one of the most vibrant stand-up comedy most audiences. I think, <laughs> they're, they're, I think the the material I was using was they, they relate a lot to Saudi culture. I think that's that's yeah, part of the yeah yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. Uh, we call them يعني يسمونه بالانجليزي crickets. Oh my god, how do you deal with that? Do you prep يعني do you prep like uh, uh, before before going into every performance you know, اسمع, there's a chance you know people are not going to like they're, they're not going to react. But it affects your also energy while you're on there, no? Does it freak you out when you're in the midst of it ولا خلاص تعودت it's like a muscle that you got used to it. Uh, في البدايه طبعا اكيد تاثر uh, يبين مع الكوميديان اذا كان تو بادي مثلا انه يتاثر كثير بالتفاعل حق الجمهور اذا ما كان متفاعل يبدا يخسر ثقته بنفسه. Uh, that's the worst thing that can happen to you on stage. Of course. Not getting angry. Getting angry can provide really good material. It's fine. That's what happened to um, what's his name? The ball comedian. Uh, see, like it could take, like, for example, you have two uh, comedians, two examples of comedians, stand-up comedians on stage, both got angry. واحد فيهم تورط وخبص ام الدنيا وواحد فيهم بدع. Uh. Okay, Michael Richards, اللي uh, هو Kramer in Seinfeld. Okay, لما mm-hmm. قدم on stage, he didn't have that much experience with stand-up comedy. For when he got heckled, it went so bad. It was just a train wreck. كانت مصيبة كبرى يعني. الردة فعلها كانت من أسوأ ما يقدمه أي stand-up comedian على المسرح. On the other hand, and Bill Burr. Okay, you can you can Google this. It's on yeah, YouTube. Google Bill Burr, في واحدة من ال المدن قدم أداء طنشينا قاعدين يأكلون يشربون يسولفون. Some of them were booing him. قام إيش سوى قلب. He threw away all his materials and started making fun of the city itself. Oof. Hey, and It counting improvising. down, improvising, and it was and counting down. How many minutes he has left on this uh, on this ho- terrible stage? Okay, <laughs> and because he turned it that way, he made it like I'm just gonna make fun of you, yeah. you know. طريقة لبسهم كلامهم الاتيتود حقهم. I think I think واحد مشيت مسخر عليه إنه أنتم ما عندكم إلا فيلم راكي. That's it. That's all. You, even in Rocky, that's a fake guy. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> you have a statue of him in your city. That's how you have a fake hero. That's that's how <laughs> that's how terrible you guys are. So, yeah, yeah, and it was so funny and on point that the audience he won the audience back mm. just doing that. Yeah, but it's it, it. This is experience. This is lack of experience. You, yeah. you can talk in the two scenarios. Not easy. How how yeah, any, uh, each comedian would deal with with uh, the same kind of circumstances. Yeah, yeah. For yeah. definitely. Experience plays a huge role. Continuous experience uh, is 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 definitely important. And also, is that the same as we would, you would say public speaking? مثلاً هلا إذا قلت لك like a comedy, like stand up comedy show versus public speaking, is it the same thing? Does it require the same muscles, the same emotional resilience? Well, like completely different things for you. I mean, with with stand up comedy, I, I I've done my share of public speaking. Obviously, working with Saudi Aramco, but uh, it's so much easier than stand up comedy because Um, في certain factors موجودة في stand-up comedy أشياء معينة لازم يعني تحطها في عين الاعتبار قبل لا تقدم العرض حقك عشان تتأكد أنه uh, you keep the audience engaged first of all timing mm. لا ت... يعني ال punchline لازم ما يتأخر كثير uh, comedy in threes يعني boom boom punchline boom boom punchline usually mm, there's, like a, there's like a rhythm to it okay there's a rhythm to it people love lists people love uh, comparisons Uh, gender comparisons, culture comparisons. Um, they love uh, personal family stories. 
especially ones that are very relatable. Um, obviously, they love talking about marriage, divorce. Uh, uh, I didn't think uh, that resonates with people. Parenthood, yeah. Kids, kids are a huge source of, of material. Um, <laughs> with, with uh, for example, yeah, and, and, and the thing is, if you have an audience that has a shared experience, like with it, and you're doing a corporate event, using uh, the, the corporate culture related to this company specifically is a huge plus. Yeah. Uh, Noah Shabiri, one of my friends, get them any out of stand-up comedy, since it's out of stand-up comedy, fee cruise, okay? Cruise ship. كانت واحدة من البواخر اللي تروح على جدة وتروح على مصر وترجع مرة ثانية. Because he was actually staying on, on the ship, uh and was experiencing the cruise just as, uh, as they were so he could use it for Salah he could use interactions between the rockab the PSA announcements the uh, security uh, measures the طاقم اللي موجود جنسيات الطاقم اللي موجود طريقه ترتيب الغرف كله كله كل هذه الاشياء استخدمها and he يعني he hooked the audience from from yeah. the first um, and I remember his, his, I think his opening line was mimicking the Moroccan guy yelling, uh, at, you know, from the loudspeakers um, when it came to like, I think security roll call or, you know, some, some kind of like uh, <laughs> announcement that they were doing, you know, for Zayli, someone of Tayyara, got what you're Kind of someone, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. but he, uh, <laughs> Made fun of him in a Moroccan accent. A little bit, they left. So they, they loved it. I think. I mean, I think this is this is what uh, this is what art is about, right? It's it's connecting to an audience, regardless of, of whether you're doing a dramatic piece uh, or you're doing a comedy piece. It's all about how do you connect with this person that is either sitting physically right in front of you, or you know through the camera or film, which is a completely different ball game. We're going to talk about that as well. Um, so I want you to take me back when you were a student when like to أهلك إني أنا راح ما راح أشتغل لأرامكو أول شيء إيش كنت عم تدرس في University of Texas and how did you have the conversation with your parents you know this is the career I'm gonna tap into and what was the reaction? Okay, and I played it safe, um, not with my major obviously, but you know, with with the way I, I smoothly transitioned into doing this full time, um, and I studied geophysics oh. at, at UT Austin. One of the things that influenced me as, as an individual creatively was the fact that Austin was uh, an, uh, had an excellent film school. That's one. Two, uh, they had a very vibrant stand-up comedy scene. A mm. um, few names that graduated from the same university, not the same college, obviously, but the same university, were with Wes Anderson, uh, Luke oh. Wilson, Wilson uh, Renee Zellweger, Matthew McConaughey was, is like the top name that graduated oh. from. Oh, Austin. these are major names. Yeah, Matthew can يعني يحضر حتى الفوتبول جيمز. Um حق the Longhorns. ف ف this is one of the things that يعني uh, kind of like was an influence on me in, uh, creatively in the beginnings. Um also a, a great geology school. So I studied geophysics there. I just started in Aramco 4 years. During this time I was doing stand up comedy on the side, not really uh, you know interfering with my work with with Aramco. Um I resigned uh, during a time when when our work on YouTube was sustainable. It was making us money through sponsorships. Mm -hmm. So I was making money from, from, from that. But once it got to a point where I could actually depend on it financially, especially as a young single guy, I didn't have a family, I didn't start a family yet or anything like that. So because of that, it was a smooth transition. And my mm. parents were kind of okay with it because I was already making money doing that. Mm. So I, the, the conversation was more like, I want to do this full-time and focus on this full-time to be able to grow. Hello. Uh, because now it reached a point, my job, it's not a career anymore, and if I'm cool, was standing in the way. Yeah. And, and, and that's the kind of conversation I was having with my parents. Not... Oh, and I'm gonna quit. Uh, uh, completely different conversation. Completely different conversation. it was easier. I know people who are like Ibrahim Al-Hajjaj. Ibrahim Al-Hajjaj is a very well-known actor, stand-up comedian. 
uh, one of his uh, يعني most notable uh, roles was قحص in مسلسل الرشاش. ف, uh, he had studied marketing, I think. Never, de- ne- never worked a day, in, uh, never worked a job a day in his life. على طول he did this full time. Mm. Uh, acting and I think he also did like a, a, a New York Film Academy workshop in Dubai or Abu Dhabi I'm not sh- quite sure like an well, acting work this is this is had, this is a theme that I talk about on my podcast a lot um, and, and it's like when to jump and whether you should go all in and when to go all in should it be a calculated risk or should it be a, and there, different people come from different schools of thought انت ايش وجهه نظرك لواحد يلحق شغفه وايش بتطلب للواحد عشان really uh, to make something out of That passion. Into back then, yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure you recognize it. It was a passion. It was, uh, it was, uh, and, and so. But Anna, by the way, Baji, Anna, I come from your school of thought. So Anna, for I'm doing you know side passion projects on the side. I've been well, hopefully they pick up momentum before I even decide if I want to take that job. Like if you want to take, I to sometimes, yeah, I know a lot of people who did stand up comedy on the side, but they were like, nah, the career is better. So they chose to remain in the, in their occupations. Who stand up for them was like it's fun, but I don't want to take it too serious. But we not take it, and that's a choice, Yanni. That's a personal choice. When do you go all in? When do I go all in? When I feel like it's become a burden. The the whatever I'm doing as as a day job becomes a burden. Becomes like oh, I, you try to find reasons to wake up in the morning, to go to work, and شغل يصير ثقيل عليك ونفسيا يبدأ يتعبك. You feel like a caged animal at yeah, some point. Yeah, wow. uh, beast, <laughs> to be more precise. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, you can go out there and hunt. You, 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 you have hunting skills, but you're caged. You know. But when that feeling occurs, in al wahdi b'day sal nafsa jadiyan. Hal astimir wala atla. Barzo wahdi min al-ashya li li ana daiman aharras alayh al-ay shakhs yibghay yidkhil majal and shakhf al-majal. Get the academic experience. I don't care what major it is. Academic discipline uh, is priceless. كثير من المواهب الموجودة الشابة في المجال ناجحة إلى حد ما. They lack key attributes. Mm. Okay. Uh, showing up on time for meetings. Mm. Punctuality. Mm. Out the window. Uh, uh, this affects their chances directly. Um, commitment uh, to 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 pro- don't start a project until you've fully developed something that you've already been working on. <clears throat> It's spinning plates. Don't don't spin more plates, and then they will just all come crashing down. One of the things that I learned from the corporate culture. Not just the comedy material I would draw from that, but also, and how to read contracts, how to uh, be able to negotiate, how to be able to send professional emails, how to create presentations for projects that you want to pitch. Mm. All part of the, the systemic corporate. aspect of education and what it teaches you, and like the yes. thought process and the approach to things. It teaches you discipline. Even the corporate world teaches you discipline. Um, yeah. If you're Dunder Mifflin, <laughs> or if you're if you're like uh, an oil company, or if you're like I don't know, uh, 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 a plastics company, soft snacks company, whatever. Yeah, food and beverage restaurant. Uh, or 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 like a, a supplier of something. It, I don't care what it is, mm. as long as there's like a corporate environment that teaches you these skills that استمر معك طول حياتك. حلو حلو. So, and like any uh, sort of tip or advice for someone entering the creative industry space, some things to think about. Yeah, sure. Uh, one thing, the number one lesson I learned is patience. Uh, sometimes it takes a year or two, minimum about a year or two. Yeah, yeah, I don't think any less than that. No one should expect, you know, just rising to the top in like six months. No, that takes that yeah. takes a while. Yeah. Um, never say no to to opportunities. Always like even if they're small, anything counts. Mishra film qasir, mishra sketch, mishra da'ay, mishra aishi. Get into it. Um, if you don't know how to do something. 
train for it. Uh, fee, a lot of screenwriting, writing, copywriting uh, uh, workshops and, and that are available to, to the public. Always have something to present. Mm. Work on it on your own. Um, if you can't attend like physical workshops, you don't have time, your geographical location does not allow for you to be exposed to certain training programs, do online courses. That's also an option that, that is out there. I, I mean, I have, for, for example, one of the first things that I did was sign up with masterclass.com when I first decided to, to get into writing itself. Yeah. Um, and and yeah, I mean, now alhamdulillah, I'm having like, handling like three projects, consulting on two and screenwriting for one with NBC, Fayani. It, it has to start somewhere. It has to yeah, start somewhere. Yes, I think I'm going to say that 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 I'm You've built a name for yourself in those uh, different endeavors. Here and today, I'm suffer. Zayi, zayi, any other thing? Because the 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 Yeah, yeah. Uh, I had to refresh. It's a, uh, uh, يعني, I was يعني, initially planning for a year. Started experiencing regaining my privacy, which was beautiful on a personal level. Uh, I started uh, being more comfortable socializing, go out, go, going out in public spaces. Because I haven't been doing anything for a while, uh, and you know, certain physical appearances have changed. You know, uh, you know, started going to the gym, so I built a little bit of, of, of body weight, uh, <laughs> not fat, but alhamdulillah, muscle weight. Yeah. So I got, I got, I got fit. Uh, I did, uh, um, I did a LASIK surgery, so I got rid of the glasses. You look, you uh, look so different. Now, I'm not yeah, saying yeah. no better. I'm just saying different, yeah. like different. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, this was all part of what I call a rebranding process. I think. Mm. No, uh, the persona I was I doing know. was kind of dictating uh, the opportunities that I was that I was getting, which now has changed because throughout the, with the the pandemic helped with that specific yeah, thing, which is great is. because I wasn't missing out on anything. Like it wasn't. hindering my opportunities or taking away from the chances I would receive. No one was doing anything at that point. Yeah. But, yeah. So I stopped for a few years. And then uh, uh, when I was approached by NBC, it was fresh. It was, it was nice. And uh, kind of was coming from, um, from the angle of, oh, this is your comeback. And which is good. We're, we're, you know, we're, we might capitalize on the buzz. And, and, and this was, this was like a, uh, this was really interesting to pick out which opportunity I would use to, you know, as, as a comeback. I think you hello what you talked about you brought up several important topics. I think one of them is personal rebranding. It's, it's such a crucial thing. I think a lot of people, they place identities on themselves, limiting identities and, the, and they, and you know, life uh, goes by and they think that's all they can be. And that's unfortunate because you can always rebrand and pivot. I talked uh, with one of my guests about that in, in season one and he talked about how he was able to pivot. I think people are able to pivot at any point during their careers if they feel, it, if they feel like it's the right time to do so and um, they shouldn't put these glass ceilings on themselves. Uh, and you talked about it. I was actually shocked to hear that you're not social. And I was like, and I was like, who is Fahid away from all of this? What career would you have chosen for yourself if it wasn't all of this? And also another question, maybe a subset of it is, did you, when back, back when you started a stand-up comedy, also felt the pressure to always have this upbeat 
personality and always be like turned on because that's what people expect of you. Did it mess, mess a bit with your head and your personal identity as a person, yeah. which led you to the break that you, you eventually talked about? Yeah, uh, um, I think with the pressure of, of fame, um, uh, increasing numbers of viewership you know, on, on social media and online in general, uh, Akid uh, puts a lot of pressure on on on, on an individual, uh, how you conduct yourself in, in public spaces, um, being able to set boundaries with with the fans or the audience uh, members that uh, approach you, um, when to say, and I learned to say no to to photos sometimes, especially if they're in like situations where I'm with family or you know in a private setting and someone is trying to you know, like they think you know no. That's not true. It's not true. Yeah, the kind of setup. مناسب. Okay. ما عندي مشكلة. بس مو أنا مثلاً مع هالي وفي نص المول فجأة توقف أنت بغصوها. يعني unless you find the right time to do it. يعني في some people are really smart. They find the perfect time to do it and تستحي تقول لا. Okay. خلاص. لا الرجال استنى لين يعني الموضوع فضى شوي وجاني بكل أدب لو سمحت. Okay. ما عند من عمر الثنتين. في ناس اللي يجوا أنت فلان. عرفت like no. It happened so many times that it's it, and also being on the whole time, like not just on, like as in I have to be funny all the time, but I have to be aware of my surroundings all the time. It's annoying, man. Um, That's a lot of pressure, though, huh? It's draining. It is draining. It's very draining. By the time you get, you just can't wait to get home. Mm. Um, also, yani, yani, you, you get to a point where so many things are, are happening in your life that you have to stop and start thinking of your own well-being, your, you, you know, mentally, psychologically. Yourself first, of course. Yeah. yeah. Put yourself first. I honestly believe that like um, art has art is much more than just art. Even had the local stand up comedy, it's like a powerful vehicle that honestly can move the needle on certain agendas. I think, yani, had the topic that you were going to talk about earlier as part of your stand up comedy, can it tilmes is a bit like topic? It can be considered a sensitive, political, political topic. It tilmes the young Saudi back then. Um, And kind of controversial to some degrees, uh, some of them. But his, but his controversial uh, content is what actually, although it might be faced with resistance at first, it's what kind of wakes people up. It's like a knock on the door. Do you believe it? No. Do you, do you agree with that? Do you agree? No, controversial. I, I kind of think that yeah, one of the things that I learned from stand-up comedy uh, is if you're going to piss people off, at least make them laugh. <laughs> Okay. Have you ever pissed uh, someone and like someone called you out on your bullshit? <laughs> like, and then it's. <laughs> I mean, I mean, yeah, يعني, it's it's more like if you're gonna, yeah, يعني, if you're gonna, yeah, يعني, if you're talking about a topic that will cause a lot of people to be angry, you're going to be surprised by this thing. Let it be on the top of your mind. Oh, okay. It's on the top of your mind, like we mixer, did in the like, mixer. It's uh, you're going to get mixed reactions. Uh, people are going to laugh. Uh, well, they hold on. I've just laughed at that. I don't know if I should, yeah. يعني, you create a um, it's more about creating a dialogue than actually يعني, giving an opinion stand up comedy it's more observation based uh it's not really opinion based يعني, حتى, if you notice it, there's only a few stand up comedians that succeeded in having opinion-driven material, namely Dave Chappelle, namely Methadone, for example, Michael Shea, um, who else? Um, Bill Burr, obviously. Um, uh, hatta when it comes to shows like Larry David, for example, is very opinion-based. But some people are not able to do this. And they have successful careers over decades, like Jerry Seinfeld, not talking about their opinion. Not politically, or socially, or anything. يعني يركز على أشياء personal, يركز على أشياء relatable, يركز على أشياء إنه يعني doesn't exactly push the envelope, but it's it's uh, يعني amazingly perfectly written and and entertaining. فيعني that's في الأخير is it entertaining? That's that's the yeah. 
Yeah, Speaking of controversial, did you watch Ashab Bala Az on Netflix? Perfect Strangers? Uh, I never had the chance to actually, no, but I know it, it's, it has uh, a lot of controversy surrounding it. Yes, yes, I yeah, understand. I was, I was hoping to get your person. I mean, uh, for me, I don't know, when I'm talking about the topic, I don't know what I'm talking about, they said to me what the things that I did, I don't know. I mean, yeah. it, they wouldn't, I don't know what I'm talking about, but I understand what I'm talking about. كيف تثير حفيظة بعض الناس أنا I'm always been a champion of material that um, don't don't uh, لا تطرح لي شيء ما هو موجود في الواقع إذا شيء موجود في الواقع أنا ما يحد لي أزعل عنه صحيح ما يحد لي هو واقع ما يحد لي أزعل أبدا إذا شيء واقعي على يحد لك أنا ما وما يحد لي أزعل منه this is how I see it other people are like no استر ما واجهت يعني حتى لو شيء واقعي مو لازم ترى تطرحه مو شرط امم اشياء ثانيه ممكن تروحها بديله الناس الواقع يعني. بيستفزهم اه ما بيحبوا يشوفوه لايك like, ما بيحبوا تو او ميبي ما بيحبوا يعملوا اكشلي ذس سمثينغ ذات اكزست ميبي ات تريجرز ذيم اي دونت نو ديفينتلي لايك ذيرز ا لوت اوف بيبل ذات هاف بين تريجرد باي ات بس يعني uh, في ناس كثير طبعا ذي فول انتو ذا لوجيكال فالسي اوف لايك او لا طيب ليش ما تتكلم عن الموضوع هذا؟ هذا <تصفيق> مهم يعني دائما احنا نشوف مثلا عندنا في ال في لايك مثلا في واحده من الحلقات تكلمنا عن بريفلي عن هيئه المعروف انها هي المنكر اوكي؟ اه اه بتكلم عن البطاله فاخصهم ببعض لوجيكال فالسي لوجيكال فالسي اول يعني ات هاز لوجيكال فالسي ريتن اول اوفر ات وات اي لاف از ذا كومبتيشن وات ايفر ات از هاو ايفر ات يو نو ويتش ايفر واي ات سويز وير اول بينفيتنج فروم ذس 100% the networks start reaching out to us a little more vigorously uh, catering to what we need as creatives listening to us more betting on us because they realize they need edge they realize and that creative edge is you know from the local talent it's not going to happen I mean Netflix has uh, a few experiences with having like uh, you know talent brought in from abroad to steer a certain project creatively for the middle east and that is just was a was a big disaster yeah i can imagine once they started once they started yani shwaya thaqoon for local uh, regional talent like team ashomani from madrasa rabi and and like um, recently with also there's another another project on the other side with shahid uh, اللي هو جميل جدا led by Sara Taiba the, the, the lead actress and writer ففي this confidence that is growing in local talents which we've always been yes, yes. ما بصدق قد ايه Jordanians are so proud of مدرسة الروابي yeah. I know a couple of actors like personal friends of mine who have part, part you know, they, they were a part of that project and uh, all I can say is cool. finally Finally, me, even me, yes, yes. And, and the thing is, you know what? The talent has always been there, but the opportunity was never there. So now you have these, you know, these networks, say Netflix, who are coming in, who are bridging that gap, who are, who are giving platforms. في حالتكم بالسعودية all these investments إن شاء الله بيطلع إن شاء الله هلا بنبلش نشوف an emergence in a beautiful artistry scene the region yeah. uh, because of the opportunity, because of the demand. And I actually, before we end it with my rapid fire questions. I wanted to hear uh, the last topic that I wanted to talk about is is that بما انه كنا عم نحكي earlier in the conversation كيف السعودية عم بتضخ مصاري عم بتضخ استثمارات في القطاع الفني و, uh, و uh, there's these massive changes that are taking place هو oh. it's a two part question اول شيء what do you hope to see um, for the the, the the Saudi artist scene بالسعودية what do we expect from you بصدى التغيير something okay. new something different that you're leveraging this, this these new opportunity avenues what i would like to see um in the region in general specifically for saudi i would love to see this um, surge in talents local talents لسه اللي عندنا في المجال على الاقل اللي ظاهرين على على السطح ما هم بالعدد الكافي to carry a real um, creative movement in the region that would um, be able to take advantage of all these uh, now available resources. Um, this melting of, of, of these uh, uh, cultural boundaries. Um, 
Yeah. If, uh, this is what I, I would love to see more projects, more talents, more people. Uh, I, I want to uh, reach a point where um, أحتار, uh, أحتار في, في أعمال مثلا منصات الأج- اللي تكون بغير اللغة العربية أبي أحتار في الأعمال العربية برضه. This is what I would love to see. So more projects, more genres, more people, more talents, and more more just you know uh, intermingling between different talents in the Arab world. I think that's that's the, that's all I expect to see or hope to see. Um, what I think I could be presenting in the in the in, in the uh, near future, inshallah. And I've already I already have a project out there that I was a screenwriter for, which is Fundaq Al-Qadar Al Shahid. But the next step is definitely acting again. Um, and I think it's going to, I'm going to begin with a comedy. Nice. Go back to your roots. Yeah, go back to the roots. And then, I mean, because because um, I've done a little bit of drama before and comedy is way more challenging. Akid. I have no problem. Any, you know, alhamdulillah, I'm, I'm, now I can say I, I'm, I'm fit enough to, to be able to do action roles too. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I think I think this is this is uh, what I would uh, what I see myself doing in the next like two to three years is um, not only writing but also appearing in front of the camera. That's super super exciting. Uh, we're coming to the end of the conversation, and uh, I, I typically like to end it with rapid fire questions. I'm going to ask you five questions. بس احكي لي اول كلمه بتخطر على بالك dont overthink it um, whatever comes to your mind with these questions <laughs> uh, question number one. if you had to wake up in a different city and place where would you want to be and why Maldives hello hi you want a vacation i don't need to hear why for that there's a lot of <laughs> obvious reasons maldives uh, Yeah. Second question, one thing that people do not know about you, it could be an interest, a hobby, a talent, guilty pleasure, anything. Uh, I'm excellent at impersonations. Hello. Yeah, of, of actual actors in the scene. Yeah, had that. <laughs> yeah. Privately, a lot of my friends realized this recently. Yeah. Uh, I should have asked for one earlier on in the game. <laughs> <laughs> um, number three, what is your definition of success? My definition of success is is waking up and and thinking you've def- definitely added something to this world. I think this is this is uh, being content with the fact that you added something to this world. I think that feeling is is the most rewarding feeling you can ever have. Agreed. Agreed. In a hypothetical scenario, question number four, if you had to give a speech and the whole world is listening to you right now and uh, you want to instill a message, uh, you want to deliver a, a theme and uh, everyone is super receptive and they're going to act probably on that theme, you're gonna, it's going to be a convincing speech. What would the theme or the title of that speech be? Leaving your comfort zone. Well, we can definitely... Talk a lot about that. You can talk for hours. On <laughs> for hours, for hours, man. Anjad, yeah. um, couldn't agree more. The last question is, what is it that Fahid wishes to accomplish one day? Um, uh, it's ambitious and maybe a little cliche, but at least being uh, nominated for one international award. Inshallah, man. At least being nominated. Inshallah. Inshallah. It's all that happens or once it happens, but that could be this conversation. I'll be like, Fahid. Oh, definitely. Remember when, the, when he talked about this? Thank you so much, Fahid, man. Thank you for the fresh energy that you brought to the podcast. For season two, I'm interviewing different caliber of people. I'm interviewing artists. Week, Fah, you were one of the very few people to be from that space and represent that space. So, um, and it's a space that's dear to my heart. I'm super passionate definitely. about the definitely. art world. Week, Fah, Habibi, thank you so much. Where can people follow you or follow your work on social media? Um, on social media, I have a Twitter account that I'm pretty active on, um, uh, at Fahad. And uh, there's my Instagram as well, uh, fahad.mov. And um, yeah, I think those those two are the most uh, where I'm most active. Well, I post about any projects that I 
um, any, any, anything that I could publicly announce, I would announce uh, via these two platforms. Very nice. Okay. Hope you enjoyed this episode and that you were able to pick up a thing or two that could help you on your journey of growth. If you would like to hear more conversations like these, please do subscribe on YouTube or through your preferred podcast platform. You can also follow more content and get in touch with me on Instagram at oneday.thepodcast. Till next time.